Last year, I wrote a blog post titled Next.js vs React to Frontend Framework Battle and its Differences. I clearly wanted to make sure that developers understood the differences between the two. But it's fair to say that it did not get a lot of love on Reddit. Many were furious that how can you compare Next.js vs React? One is a framework, other one is a library. But yet, many developers, even a year later, asked me the same question over and over again. Here's why. For years, React has been dominating the market. But after Next.js came along and after it gained its popularity, Next.js team and React team have been working really closely together. To an extent where a lot of React features are ex exclusively available inside of Next.js, which does trigger the question, should you learn React first or Next.js first? To a lot of beginner devs. So in this specific video, I want to cover it all. What are the differences between the two, React versus Next.js? What is the difference between a library and a framework? And there is more to this that I'm going to cover in this specific video. So let's get started. So first, you need to understand the difference between a framework and a library. Now, Next.js is a framework versus React is a library. So it is not fully a fair comparison or a battle per se between Next.js and React because they both complement each other versus compete with each other. So for example, framework and a library are both reusable pieces of code. But a library is essentially a collection of modules or functions, whereas a framework allow us to glue things together. They provide a skeleton and structure to your application. You can think of a library as a set of assorted box of Legos where you can do whatever you want with the Legos. The Legos are there to help build a really good Lego set for yourself. And that Lego set can be different depending on the Legos that you have. Now you can do whatever you want with those Lego pieces. Versus with the framework, they're essentially a Lego set with a predefined model on the box. Now on the box will have all the instructions that you need to do to make sure that you put together that specific Lego set. You can follow the instructions on the box to build the model with limited customization. You can essentially follow those instructions. That's exactly what Next.js does. Next.js gives you that skeleton, that structure, so that you can hold all those Lego pieces together and it shows you how you could do so. Versus React is a library. It's essentially the Lego pieces themselves. So you can use to build components and UI you can be used to build components and manage state and so on. So a framework extends the capabilities of React. A Lego set, a predefined Lego set extends the capabilities of a set of Lego pieces. In order for you to learn Next.js, you need to have a good solid understanding of React as well. I've been working on a front-end developer roadmap to really help you understand the skills that you need to become a really solid, successful front-end developer. But at the same time, you are an existing front-end developer, and if you need to know what are the missing things in your knowledge, then you can also use a specific roadmap to essentially map out to those specific skills and get a plan for how you can bridge that specific gap. So please check the link in the description below because this front-end roadmap is going to really help you a lot. Now let's talk about what is React and what is Next.js. What is React? React is a library that was built by Facebook mainly to help build user interfaces. It mainly focuses on the front end and provides a component based architecture for creating reusable components. Now, React is popularly known for building SPA, which is single page applications. And if you're familiar with the model view controller pattern, then React would be the view layer of the MVC model. On the other hand, on the other hand, Next.js is a framework which is built on top of React. Next.js extends the React capabilities and provides a lot of different features such as server-side rendering, uh, different caching mechanisms, it has a built-in router, but it is mainly designed to build full-stack applications, not just front-end. So a better comparison with Next.js would be Create React App, because Create React App allows you to bootstrap a react application with a lot of the features that a framework provides now with create react app you can also add server-side rendering but it is really complicated versus with next.js it's quite 
easy to add server side rendering because it thinks of caching from the get go. Now, let's talk about a few features that are important in a front end application and let's try to compare React and Next.js or rather create React app and Next.js and try to see what is best suited for your use case. So, first one being data fetching. Now, with React, a lot of the decisions for data fetching is left up to the developers. How you fetch your data, you can use essentially a library such as Fetch or Axios to fetch data, fetch API data and show it onto the page. But you, you have full control for how you can manage data inside of React applications. Versus with Next.js, it does have a few ways where you can fetch data inside of Next.js and it recommends to use those ways to basically cache that data so that you can get performance benefits out of the box. Now you may have heard of static site generation, incremental site regeneration, server side rendering. These are all ways to fetch data inside of Next.js. Now all of these ways are essentially ways where you can cache data as well. So that's why when you build a Next.js application, you do get that immediate performance boost because thinking of caching from the get-go. But whereas React doesn't think of all of that. With React, it gives you full independence as a developer to come up with your own data fetching strategies. And that is the difference between what a framework does and what a library would. The next important feature is routing. Now, React does not have any built-in router. In fact, if you do use Create React App, then you would need to basically add an additional router as a React Router library or some other library to route between the pages. Versus Next.js does have a file system based opinionated built-in router that means anytime you create a file name page inside of your directory inside of your app directory then a new page would essentially get created that is a new route will be essentially created because of this it's easier to navigate between pages and you can navigate between server side pages as well as client side pages as well thanks to next.js router but in React as well, you could use a router such as React Router, which is quite popular for client-side routing. Now, one of the biggest advantages of using Next.js is its different mechanisms to build performant applications. For example, the biggest one being caching. We do fetch a lot of data and show a lot of data to the page. By default, Next.js supports pre-rendering. That means any content that you see on the page is all automatically cached onto your closes CDN. Similarly, with Next.js, it does offer different caching mechanisms so that you can fetch data and cache data as well. So you do get that performance benefit from the get go, depending on the caching mechanism that you opt for. Now, one of the popular data fetching mechanism is called server side rendering. With Next.js, server side rendering is quite straightforward. With Next.js, you can easily perform server side rendering by passing in an additional property. Versus when React, if you want to do the same thing, it's quite complicated. You need to understand how Webpack bundles your build because Create React App does use Webpack. Without Next.js, with Create React App, you wouldn't need a good solid understanding of how Webpack works internally. And Webpack is not a straightforward tool. But we use Webpack to bundle all our files together. It has different mechanisms to perform code splitting, minifying your files, and so on. But some of that can be obvious, but a lot of it is not. If you want to configure server-side rendering with Create React App, it is quite complicated and it's quite the feat. So with Next.js, this is all really easy and it helps you focus on development more than worrying about how certain intricacies of Webpack or how server-side rendering works internally. You don't need to know that. With Next.js, you can get started right away. But at the same time, with all these different data fetching mechanisms and how how much data fetching has changed between the different next year's version it can be definitely intimidating for a beginner dev who is trying to learn and get ramped up with next year's so what exactly should you learn first should you learn react first or should you learn next year's with a lot of react features being only specifically available in next year's just server server components then it definitely confuses the developers that hey should i just go and learn next year's then instead of learning react but I do have a controversial opinion here. I do think that Next.js extends the capabilities of React, but if you don't know what, how, what React is, then you won't be able to understand how to build applications and scale components really well. You still need to learn React first. You need to understand how to build a good component 
how to scale those specific components, how to manage your data globally with React context, how to pass state, how to, how to avoid prop drilling, what in fact is prop drilling. And there is so much more to React itself that can be complicated enough that Next.js can be really intimidating with all the different caching mechanisms. So in my opinion, I think you should start with just React first, try to get a good grasp of it. And once you're able to build a simple application with just React, then introduce Next.js so that you're able to understand the differences between what the framework provides and what create React app or just re plain React gives you out of the box. So you would be able to make that choice for yourself. Whenever you want to architect your applications or grow as a developer, one of the important things is that you need to make those choices yourself and you need to understand why certain things are done the way they are. That is what's going to make you an experienced developer. So I really think that you should first really understand React and then introduce Next.js and slowly start learning the data fetching mechanisms within Next.js and how all of that works together to be able to learn both of them together. Once you're really familiar with React and how Next.js works, then moving forward, you can only build your applications with Create Next App with Next.js itself because Next.js is the production framework for React. You can basically build and uh, scale applications really easily with, with Next.js. Sure, there is a learning curve, but you will be able to learn better and grow your skills as a front-end developer as you build Next.js applications. So for your toy projects, for your side projects, you can definitely go with React if you don't know Next.js. But once you do have a good idea, then start learning Next.js and start using Next.js inside production because that's where you will truly see the advantage of it. So what do you think? Would you recommend learning Next.js before you learn React? What are your thoughts was on React versus Next.js and some of the differences between what a library and a framework is? Please let me know in the comments below.